Hey, take a look at this. It's a handwritten note and an original hand-drawn art piece from the co-creator of this totally fun, totally non-OGL RPG that they personally slipped into the print copy of their game when I purchased it a couple months ago because they're nice people. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna get a note or original art if you buy this game. I think they recognized my email address and had seen some of my videos, but I've never received anything from the company that I've been freely promoting and purchasing from for the last several years. And at this point, unfortunately, we can be fairly certain that the executives of that company don't want me or really anyone on YouTube, but definitely not anyone with a Patreon or a great Kickstarter idea to create anything for their game anymore. Unless we get some extremely different information from what we already know about the new D&D open game license. So while most of my videos will still be applicable to folks playing D&D, and I'm probably still gonna play the D&D that I have, and I'm still planning to talk about more classic D&D stuff soon, I'd like to diversify. And if you like that idea, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below telling me what other games like old school D&D stuff or other modern systems that you'd like me to share with this community. Because I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun playing all kinds of RPGs together, and the first new RPG that I want to share with you is Skate Wizards. Tagline, a steezy role-playing game about radical and arcane shredding of the gnar. <laughs> because I just love reading this book. It's hilarious, fun, rules light, and it has nothing to do with the OGL, so it can't be affected by any of the new changes. Seriously, it's so easy to learn that with only this video and your own copy of the PDF, you could be running a fun and memorable session of Skate Wizards tonight. Which reminds me, one minor caveat to this review. I haven't actually played this game myself yet, but I've read this book over and over because every time I read it, I laugh out loud. I've read thousands of pages of D&D books, and I don't know if I've ever just enjoyed the process of reading them like I have with this game. It's only 40 pages and it's very well designed. Exactly at this centerfold is the last spread of the rules. So the Skate Wizards game rules are really only about 20 pages. Then the other half contains this micro setting, the Stone Grave Valley, with four mini adventure scenarios based on retrieving a different arcane artifact everything you need in one little book. And this is not sponsored, by the way. I get no affiliate cut or anything. I'm just sharing a fun game made by nice people. And there are links below where you can check it out. If you want to support me too, a great way to do that is by picking up one of the remaining sets of the limited edition Metal Bob World Builder dice, also linked below. Skate Wizards begins with a thank you to the reader and a number of collaborators, mentioning Ben Milton, aka Questing Beast, here on YouTube because the co-creators were inspired by his old-school rules light fantasy RPG, Maze Rats. And apparently they got some help from legendary Dungeon Crawl Classics module-writing genius Harley Stroh. So how does this game feel? Where modern D&D is flavored and built for highly customizable, super-heroic power fantasy combat, Skate Wizards assumes you want to play a really cool skateboarding wizard. It relies on random and improvisational magic for fun, and it excels at problem solving. Much like Legend of Zelda games, the dungeons themselves are kind of like puzzles because you're supposed to traverse them on a skateboard. Solving a dungeon earns you a magical item, making you more powerful, and combat still plays a role, of course. Here's the premise. You are a member of the Hermetic Order of Skate Wizards. Once you rolled in the lowlands, and before the trouble came, you had retired to your sanctuary high in the mountains with the remaining brothers and sisters of your order. There you delved deeply into the mystical skateboarding arts. One day, several envoys reached your secluded sanctuary calling for your help. You answer that call to action and roll down, intent on locating the long-lost magical items that could stoke the dying flames of civilization. So you have to scour the land and delve dungeons to find magic items and fight off these stray remnants of extra-dimensional armies that nearly destroyed everything while you were chilling in the mountains. Character creation is the easiest thing I've ever seen. Reminder, you are definitively a skate wizard, so all you do is roll 1d6 to determine your array of stats. A plus two, a plus one, and a plus zero 
randomly placed between strength, dexterity, and will. Will is kind of like charisma and wisdom together. So you don't have to worry about which stat method is optimal or determining scores and then calculating a modifier. It's just an ability bonus. And one of my favorite lines, the connection between skate wizards and their skateboard is so complete, they share all stats. <laughs> Note, to be a skate wizard means you exist in symbiosis with your skateboard. You may be immortal, but your board can suffer damage and eventually break. We'll talk about that when we get to combat. Your only other stats are health and defense, which start at 4 and 6 respectively. Those numbers should look low, we'll talk about that in a minute. And you have an attack bonus that I believe starts at 0 but that's the one thing I'm not clear about after reading this multiple times. The other defining elements of your skate wizard are their spells. Permanent spells, rando, not random, but rando spells, and bootleg spells. Every skate wizard gets the same three permanent spells, ramp, sidewalk, and rail, which literally produce a magical ramp, sidewalk, or rail beneath your skateboard. Noting, depending on the circumstances, the GM can allow skate wizards to cast simultaneously to increase the area slash impact of a spell. As in the name, you always have these three permanent spells, but each day you also start with one rando spell, determined by rolling 4d12. You just generate a wacky name, such as the janky, bewildering uh, shadow well. Then in the moment, when that player wants to cast this spell, they describe what they think it should do. Maybe it's a dark portal that suddenly appears beneath your enemy like a wily e. coyote bit and the GM determines whether or not that's reasonable and how to adjust the effect. It's truly a rando spell, keeping the player and GM on their toes, but in probably a low stakes way that's just pure fun. And after using it, you lose it, and tomorrow you roll up a new rando spell. Then bootleg spells. Each day you roll one or choose one from a list of six spells, such as mattress, Create a magical, cushiony, king-size mattress that minimizes the impact of a fall from three stories or less. Or, gleam the cube. I don't even know why I laugh every time I read that. Defy gravity with your board for five minutes, allowing you to skate on walls and ceilings. But the most important thing about bootleg spells is that your wizard prepares them by watching basically old VHS tapes of arcane skateboarding tricks, and after you cast one, there's a 50% chance the tape gets busted and you won't be able to cast it again until the next day. Then there are 12 pieces of equipment described here, some being semi-magical items, and at, by this point, it's worth noting one thing, occasionally referenced in a joking way that could be a turnoff for some folks. Even I kind of rolled my eyes at the first mention, but it's just part of what makes this funny to read. And I'm going to give you an example from the equipment. Smoking pipe. Puffing the sacred smoke prior to a roll provides advantage once per day. Passing to other skate wizards on the left-hand side grants them advantage as well. Probably something you should reflavor if running this for children. But yeah, we've all seen enough Gandalf smoking jokes to go along with it. And in the last six pages of the rules, we get to the rest of the mechanics. And I really like their approach. Check out Danger Rolls. Whenever possible, a PC's actions should be resolved by a player simply describing what the character does. However, if the action is risky and difficult to resolve through description, the GM may call for a danger roll. The PC rolls 2d6 and adds the relevant bonus. If the total is 10 or higher, the PC avoids the danger. If not, the GM describes how things go wrong. So rather than our totally swingy d20, we have a 2d6 bell curve to determine the outcome of our rolls. And these are danger rolls. The average of 2d6 is only 7. So even with a plus 2, skate wizards really are taking a risk if they have to roll and succeed on a 10. And this is amazing, because 1. It encourages the game master to lean less on dice mechanics and more into role playing, and 2. It encourages the players to be very creative with their magical skate ramps and rando spells, trying to overcome those risks in interesting ways or at least earn advantage on their rolls. Of course, advantage is just rolling 3d6 and taking the two highest, and disadvantage is taking the two lowest. Getting into combat, Skate Wizards uses side initiative, so the party just rolls one die, and the monsters roll one die, and the high roll goes first. So fast, so easy, and again, without a strict order for every single creature and character, this game encourages the party to work as a group 
to cast spells together and just think outside the box. Rolling an attack is 2d6 plus attack bonus, then from that total, you subtract the opponent's defense number, and the difference equals any damage dealt. For example, you attack with 2d6 plus 1 and get 8, so the opponent's defense is 6, that means they take 2 points of damage. Easy. And rolling double sixes on an attack is a critical hit. Isn't it nice to have a game where the GM and the players can roll critical hits? Encumbrance is also simple, just be able to describe where you're storing stuff within reason, and there's not really currency in this game. So once again, your players have to be a bit creative with bartering for information and equipment. And we just got to maybe my favorite mechanic of the game, another part that I cannot help but laugh at whenever I read it. Becoming a poser. Because in Skate Wizards RPG, you do not die, you are an immortal wizard. But if your health drops to zero or you use non-Skate Wizard magic, your board breaks and you become a poser. <laughs> For example, you have a two-wheeled scooter which you can't use, nevertheless you insist on explaining why your scooter is just as cool as a skateboard. And as much as I want to share each of the poser attributes in their entirety, if this sounds fun to you, you kinda owe it to the creators to check this part out yourself. Healing is very simple. Skate wizards recover one health when they eat a meal, preferably a burrito, and get a full night of rest. If a poser wants to become a skate wizard again, he or she must go through the character creation process by bonding with a new skateboard as a level 1 skate wizard. This process takes 24 hours and requires the remaining PCs to craft a new deck, inscribe it with fresh runes, and chill around the campfire with the poser. So there's no revival in the typical sense. You can keep your level and continue to play as a poser, essentially a goofy dressed fighter who uses non-skate wizard magic items, or you can create a new skate wizard at level one, which really is not so bad because leveling up is also very simple and there are only seven levels. The GM will grant an experience point for every yes given to the following questions. Did you show up to the game? One XP. Did you overcome a difficult challenge? One XP. Did you recover a magical item? 1 XP. Done. Then you level up, gain some health, and either a plus 1 ability bonus, plus 1 to your attack bonus, or another rando spell, depending on your level. Then the included Stonegrave Valley half of the book outlines four adventures in which your skate wizards must travel to a few forgotten tombs or temples to retrieve rumored magic items, like the Temple of Brazoth, once a worthy monument to the bugbear gods of conquest, is now a crumbling edifice inhabited by a disgruntled staff. Nevertheless, the Horde of Valhalla might be in there somewhere. <laughs> And in this four-page adventure, we get a little lore about the Horn of Valhalla, uh, a hilarious NPC, Jerome the Bear Dancer, some guidelines for the GM, and an outline for the temple, and a map of what lies within. Now, if you're lucky, and there are currently more print versions available because this is just two cool guys who made this game, you may be able to get the bundle with a set of dice, a Skate Wizard sticker, and the original soundtrack on cassette, <laughs> also with digital downloads of the PDF and the music. And the music makes it much easier to set the mood for this game when you decide to try it out. And even if Skate Wizards doesn't sound like your style, I strongly recommend you start supporting nice creators, like the makers of this game and other indie RPGs. Just liking and sharing this video with your game group are two free and easy ways to support these creators and me. You can also support this community by subscribing, maybe even getting a cool set of those Bob World Builder dice, or joining my Patreon. Those are great ways to help, especially right now. So thank you, and keep building. Oh, and I got this really cool, comfortable poncho for Christmas, and it felt like the perfect time to wear it in a video.